This video aims to help you to understand what a maxi-min and what a mini-max problem are in dynamic programming. We'll start with maxi-min. You can see here that what we're looking at with a maxi-min problem is to look at the whole route and make the smallest cost in that route as large as possible. We're not interested in the total cost just in making the smallest cost as big as possible. So in a network, we would look at various routes and our maxi min route would be the one where the smallest cost is the biggest. A mini max problem is very similar. It's just that this time we're looking at the greatest cost in the route and we're trying to make that as small as possible. Again, the total cost is not normally of interest. We'll look at a couple of tabulations now to try and help with understanding of this. Any possible route we have through this network, we need to look at the maximum weight edge on that route. So for example, if we went A, B, E, G, the maximum weight edge there would be 7. We have 7, 1 and 3. The idea of a mini-max problem is to make that maximum weight edge as small as possible. We carry out our tabulation in exactly the same way as we do with a maximum or minimum problem but instead of having maximum or minimum the total in this column we just look at the current mini max in other words we're looking at the only thing that of interest here is the maximum weight edges and we want a route where that maximum weight edge is as small as possible This is a completed table for that route and we can see that we've identified here our mini max, our minimum maximum. You can see going from A, stage 5, state 1, we have values of 7, 6 and 5 and we've picked the smallest, the 5. We can find our route from here. We've taken action 3 from 5-1 five, five, from A, which is this action here, which takes us to C. We then look at C and see we've taken action 1, which would be this action here to D. Then go to D and again action 1, so it's this action here to E. And then from E, action 1, which takes us directly to G. So we explain that here and you can see that this gives us the minimax route of A, C, D, E, G with a value of 5. If we look at any of these different nodes we can see here at C for example that we have 3 followed by 5. Well the 3 for action 1 is the weight of the arc for action 1, which is 3. We then go to D, which is where that takes us, and we pick out the current minimax from D. So that's the second value there. Maxi-min works in exactly the same way, except this time we're trying to make the minimum weight of any particular arc in a route as large as possible. Again, we're not generally interested in the total weight. The tabulation is exactly the same, but now we have the current maxi-min in this end column here, as opposed to the mini-max that we had with the previous example. And if we look now at the completed tabulation, we can see here, if we look at A, We've gone for this value here, 
and this value here. These both have values of 4, so we actually have two maximin roots here. If we look at this one first, we can see we've taken action 2, which is this action here to D. From D we take action 2, which takes us to F. And then from F we have only one option, going straight to G. So we end up here with a maximin root of A, D, F. G. We could find the other route by starting here, taking the first action to B, then the second action from B, which takes us to D, and then from D, second action to F, and from F to G. OK, well hopefully that's helped you understand a bit what a maximum minimum, a maxi min or a minimum maximum are. Important in dynamic programming and also crop up later in decision two in game theory. Have a look at these five scenarios here and see if you can decide whether in order to solve them it's a maximum, a minimum, a mini-max or a maxi-min problem? The answers follow. So that's the first five. Five more. Pause the presentation to give yourself more time if necessary. And here's the answers. You'll notice the answers aren't in the same order as the questions, but have a good look through and make sure that you understand why these problems are either minimax, maximin, maximum or minimum. And the final five answers, there. If you're not sure about any of those, have a good think about it and by all means ask in the lesson.